Hey everyone, it's Ollie from Mashup Games. A couple months ago, Jonas Tyroller released a video in which he made 50 games in a day and then challenged other people to do the same. Now I, for one, no. But by May, I rewatched another one of Jonas's recent videos. How to make it fun to press a button by adding loads of features and effects and all that jazz. And I thought, huh, why don't we just get this idea and just... And so this video is how I made 50 game features in one day. Kinda. Okay, maybe not. It took like a week. Making 50 features in a week. So how do we do this? Well, let's start with a square on the ground. This is boring. You can't do anything with it, so let's add a feature. Press space, and whoa, the square jumps! Now we have the player affecting what's on screen. But when you've made this square jump, there isn't anything else to it. You'll get the same response every time. The square will jump in the exact same way no matter how hard or long you press space. So let's add a second dimension to the movement. The player moves constantly left and right. Now you can see that if you press space to jump, the player will still jump, but now there's variation in the response. Maybe the player will jump straight up, or bounce off a wall. Who knows? But a square is still boring. Nobody wants to control a square. So for feature 3, let's add some eyes to the player. Oh, and a top hat, because our player is fantasy. But with this addition, the player just looks in one direction. So let's make the player look in the direction they are moving. This is great and all, but not interesting enough. So feature 5 brings in platforms that the player can hop onto. Now there's another dimension to the gameplay, and the player has more choice on where they want to go in the level. But this freedom has no impact. If the player hops onto the platform, great, but it doesn't offer anything else. So the game could do with a reward. And this reward, as seen in most other games, is Moolah. Some coin for your pixel purse. Now the player has consequence for their action, with some reward. Though I think this coin collection could be made more fun, don't you? Alright then, let's make the coins spin. And when the player collects them, they spin off screen. Cool, cool, cool. And this is a very happy-go-lucky game. Just a player collecting coins. Nothing bad is gonna happen. <laughs> and if death wasn't fun enough... Wait. Then let's make the player explode with some fancy dancey particle effects in. Now the player dying really pops. Or it explodes. Next, let's make a game over screen. Now this offers the player an easy chance to restart the game by simply reloading the level. Our jumping is okay, but in order to jump you need to press in the exact time the player is grounded, which can make you miss jumps if you're just a millisecond off. So let's make an adjustment to the jumping that will remember if the jump button is pressed a few milliseconds before the player hits the ground, and if the player was recently grounded. Now there's leniency in the jumping that doesn't punish the player so much if they're some milliseconds off. And now let's look at what we have so far. Looks great. But, wait, no, it doesn't look great, what am I on about? It's a white square jumping about on other white squares. That's boring. Let's make things more colourful. I don't know why I just kissed, why did I just kiss? You can see how much difference just some simple pixel art can make to a game, and some colour too. But now the player has pixels, it looks rigid. So what the player needs is some animation. Now the player has a little bounce when it moves, and there's some slight animation in its jump and fall. But unfortunately, we had to get rid of the fancy hat. An important aspect of designing a game is game feel. No, not that type of game feel. I mean the feel of playing a game, how the game responds to user input. You have to make the player enjoy what they're doing through visual feedback on screen. So when the player jumps, they squish. Squash and stretch is also a key aspect in animation and gives the player a bigger sense of impact in their jump. Let's make the camera follow the player too. Being stuck in one area is boring. So if the camera can follow the player, the player can traverse them around and explore more areas. But if the camera follows the player up, what happens if the player falls down? That's right, the player explodes! How dare they try and go somewhere we can't see? Another nice little visual addition that gives more oomph to the movement is a trail that follows the movement of the player, gives a sense that the player is moving quickly. This game is starting to remind me of a lot of mobile games, so why not make it look like one? There you go, portrait screen. Great for the game, annoying for recording. And since the player is moving up, it gets annoying to try to jump up onto a block, but the block stops or blocks the player. So why not add a platform that the player can jump onto from underneath? Noise. Revisiting game feel, no, again, not that feel. Let's add more particles that emit on the ground when the player jumps. Again, this gives more impact to the player jump, as it gives a sense of a power to the jump. Now, for the sake of people playing on the computer, I added a quick restart where the player needs only press the R key to restart rather than moving their mouse 
all the way over to the restart button. Was this feature needed? No, not at all, but did it make it easier for me to quick test the game? You betcha. Now this feature, I simply just called Bitcoin. How about some blocks that break when the player walks on them? I got you gathered. But Ollie, I hear you say, what's the point of playing this game? Well, I... There is no point. Huh. Well, let's add one then. There you go, a high score. Now the player would have an incentive to beat their high score, so they would play the game more. How about some blocks that only appear when you push a button? That sounds like fun. This is fun and all, but there's no sense of urgency, as a player can move up the level at their own pace. So let's make the player anxious, shall we? Now that camera moves by itself, so if the player doesn't act quickly enough, bye bye. But what's that on the game over screen? Why, it's a main menu. How fun, and right now not very useful. For an endless runner that this game has become, the player needs more platforms rather than me making the platforms myself. So why don't we make those platforms born endlessly? Now each game player is different, and the order of platforms generated is random and endless. And if a player gets good, then surely they can continue going forever, right? No they can't, because they'll get bored of it pretty easily. So why don't we add a difficulty curve? Now the simulation speed will increase over time, so the more skilled the player is, the higher a score and the longer they'll be playing for. But we don't want to make the game too hard, so why not make those fragile blocks that break come back? And we don't want to punish the player if they get too ahead, because then they'll either jump off screen or die off screen from something they couldn't see. So now, if the player gets too high in the level, the camera will simply catch up. Huh? What's that? Oh, I didn't realise I had that off. Let me flip that switch. Wow, it's pretty amazing how much difference a couple of sound effects can make to a game. But these sound effects are too loud. If only there was a way to change the volume. Oh wait, there is! Now we have an options part of the main menu with some options. And what's this? A reset button? If you want to start again, simply press this button and make sure you want to press the button, and your high score will be reset to zero. And because I'm a YouTuber and I can't help but inflate my ego, let's add a credits to the menu that shows who made the game. And if you click on it, then it'll take you to my channel where you can hit that subscribe. And if you're watching this video, well, when the button's already there to subscribe, just reminding you it's there. Okay, what's next? Oh yes, my favourite part! My trade secret for my last level video. And now time for a little thing that makes any game instantly look better without any effort at all. That instantly looks better. Good job, me. Post-processing. It's, it's post-processing. I meant to say post-processing. But with a little tweak to the variables, the game gets a little more polished without looking too filtered. Let's add more variety in the gameplay. How about a little effect that gives the player a recharge to its jump? It's a little janky, but it's a feature. And you know what else is a feature? How about some background art? The plain colour background did work, but it wasn't very interesting. So now there's walls and pipes in the background since this game appears to have a somewhat industrial theme. But the background could be pushed further. Why not make the background animated? We could add some traditional animation in moving parts, but instead I'm going to fall back on the common background animation, parallax. What is parallax you say? Well it's moving objects far off in the distance when the camera moves to give a fake sense of depth. So we can see the walls move at a different speed to the camera, and the pipes way back in the distance move a whole lot different speed to the walls. Now our game is a little quiet. Sure we have sound effects, but right now they're echoing around an empty space. So let's bring in the orchestra. Cool music, but do you know what's cooler? Speeding it up! This isn't really speeding it up. The music rises in pitch the longer the player is alive, which gives a sense of rising tension and speed without actually changing the speed of the music. And because I'm only now finding out how great Unity's particle system is, let's add some to the background. Thanks, Unity particle system. Our buttons are looking a little plain, so let's change them here. Nice, nice, nice. And you know what else is nice? A relaxing of tension. And right now, when the player dies, the music just keeps on going. So let's make the music return to normal pitch and drop a lot in volume when the player dies. This game is shaping up pretty well, but something feels off. It's like we forgot something that used to be so important to us at the beginning of this journey. That's right, it would feel cruel not to give this fella their top hat back. And since we gave them a top hat, why not other hats? Why not the classic mashup game sunglasses? Am I adding these hats as separate features because I've run out of features to add? 
You bet I am. Now stop calling me out on it. And since I'm the one who made this game, why not throw some Easter eggs in there as extra hats, like the plant sprout, or the glow blob, or the last level cap. Now where can you get these hats? Why in the shop of course. Now you can save up money you earn in the game to buy some of the hats and express yourself. And now, the final feature, the big 5-0. What could it possibly be? A combo counter, unity ads, different player colours? Putting it on the Google Play Store? It's this block. That's the final feature. A white block. This whole game went from this... to this. And so there you have it. I made a game in 50 features. Was it fun? Yeah, I learned a lot on this journey. Should I put it up on Google Play Store so you can play it on Android devices? You bet your butt I'm gonna do that! But I don't know how to. I will once I learn. But if you like challenges like this one, why not take on the challenge of making a game within 72 hours and join the mashup Game Jam? The first ever Game Jam hosted by this channel will be going on from the 5th of June. And we've already had quite a few people sign up, so it's not something to miss. Link to the page in the description. And don't forget to join the Mashup Games Discord server. We've now hit over 100 members, so it's pretty active. And now, if you've liked this video and want me to do more challenges like this, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. This is Mashup Games, signing out.